Hello and welcome to Real Talk, live from the University of Salford's Media City campus, where we'll be taking a sip from the hot gossip of this week's entertainment news. Coming up on the show, we'll be talking and we will later ask the questions that need answers. But first, let's meet all our panel. Hi, I'm Aaron from Bury. I'm Lee from Belfast. And I'm Holly from Cumbria. And I'm Will from Newcastle. So let's jump straight into the papers. It's time for Hot Pages. So the first magazine is an article from New. This article takes a look inside the home of TV presenters Laura Whitmore and Ian Sterling. New have quoted the home as stylish and quirky, but I have to say the house is, I mean, fairly ordinary. Nothing too, uh, nothing too fancy there, but uh, some nice little like retro bits going on there. Guys, what do you think? Um, I think it's their house. Then uh, that's the way they like it. Then they should I uh, keep that's their decor. Like, you know, everyone's house is different. We all have our own style, and I think like. This doesn't define. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what the thing what, I like? Oh, so, oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh. Just because you've got like a lot of money doesn't mean that they necessarily have to spend it all in one place. You know what I mean? It's yeah. It's up to them yeah. to decide what the, they want. The thing I do like most about this is their like MTV and BAFTA awards are sitting there with their little Santa hats on and the photo <laughs> just underneath there, like loud and proud, middle of the shelf, yeah. just oh, right yeah, where you'd yeah, have yeah, it. So, yeah. Just right where you'd have it. I think the living room looks actually quite cozy. Like my mind sitting there watching Netflix. I don't um, think I expected their house to look like anything fancier or bigger than what it actually is. Because they're both quite quirky. Yeah, they're anyway. both quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't, they're celebrities, yeah, but they don't make out that they're like massive, massive celebrities, do they? Yeah. I feel like Laura Whitmore's got more popular now. Oh yeah, Love definitely. Island, just, like, mm -hmm. I wasn't too familiar with her. I know she did the radio mm -hmm. and stuff, but like now she's become a household name, if you wanted to say. Yeah. Because yeah. But do you think popular. it's because they're such well-known people and we all see them on telly all the time, we just think they've got these massively glamorous lives and where it's actually, yeah. they are just, well, There's horny people doing a job. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. It's just your normal North London home. I mean, you know, some nice little features on there that you can see on that right hand side. My favourite one's definitely the keep calm and drink tea. You can relate <laughs> to that quite yeah. a lot. You know, are there any items that you guys would add to your add to your? I like that chair. I like the the <laughs> player. I, like I think the it's quite chair. quirky. You know, mm -hmm. funky. Um, and everything's actually quite reasonably priced as well. Yeah. Which is quite surprising. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Well, Aaron, what is your topic that you want us to talk about today? So I looked into OK Magazine and they did an interview with Louis Women's Andrea McLean about she's just turned, like, just being in her 50s and she said that she feels like the best that she's ever felt and, like, 50s are, like, the perfect age that people can be. So I was just wondering what your sort of guys' opinions were on... on I mean, I can't talk from experience, <laughs> really, on this one. But, um, I mean, she seems... Happy, she seems healthy, so you've got to, got to give credit mm, to that. Yeah. She looks good, like, she yeah. looks really good. Um, I also feel like you're as old as you feel, and like, yeah. I, my mum, mm. exa for example, like, she's 50, but she looks like she's 30, and she's like really active, and you know, like, she like, likes going out. She has a better social life than me, yeah, so like, with cocktails and with her friends, and she's like, I'm um, always on the phone, oh, I'm going to what this outfit, like, and doing mm -hmm. this, and doing that. And I'm like, like you live a better life yeah. than me, and I'm like, a Yeah, like, I'm enjoying being 20, but when I get to 50, I hope that I have yeah. as big a social life as my mum and dad do. They are never <laughs> out of the pub. No. Like, it's ridiculous. Well, I don't even think my dad is literally one of the, like, I know I might be a little bit biased, but my dad's like one of the coolest people I know, oh, like, honestly. Nice. Like he, he just he plays more like PlayStation than me. And, like, he's fifty three years old, so you know what I mean. He's just living his best life. I think it's just more about like living in the moment, I yeah. guess, for it. I mean, I'm kind of enjoying my twenties, the yeah. one year that I've had of it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, I, my mum always says like, you know, getting old's not fun. Like, and I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, you've got one life. You might as well enjoy it. Stop mm -hmm. worrying about your age and just like. Look, like, look how good she looks. She does not look She did like 50. a marathon, she's active, her skin looks amazing. Yeah. She doesn't even look 50. Uh, so Holly, 50. your story for this week. So I had a look at Closer magazine and an interesting article in there was about how there was some 40, 30s and 40 year olds sharing houses. Now we all have experience of house sharing. Knowing what we know now, would we live in a house share when we get to our thirties or our forties or even our fifties. Um, for me, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely not. Uh, why would you not? Do you not like? Because I want to be in a relationship with someone and be living with someone mm -hmm. in their forties and like 
see like living with students now who can't even be bothered to get the bends, it just stresses me out. I mean, I'd hope by the time you're 40, you're a bit tidier mm, than you are I, now in your 20s. Yeah. Some people don't have personal hygiene. Well, and also, <laughs> you know? also, I think it's just a bit about like you want your own space and you don't want yeah. that space always yeah. like crowded with somebody else, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like if you can if you can help it, you would much rather like be like on your own, not on your own. But like yeah. you don't want to just share a house with someone yeah. because of the I same mean, thing. I mean, I like living with my friends, but um, feel like I couldn't put up with them into my forties as well. But these people have kids too, so it's not just them; it's yeah. them and their kids. Now, I struggle to do the washing in my house already, as it is one day a week. What's it going to be like for them? Like, but surely it would be good if you, uh, with your best, with your best friends or your best mate. Surely it'd be a good, a good thing to live with them, if especially like if you think. Cities like London, warehouses are so expensive. expensive. They might not have a choice. I suppose it does cut the cost, but like, for yeah. me personally, I yeah. think it would be absolutely madness. It would be manic. Uh, I couldn't cope with that, you know. No. I'm lying in the morning, so I'll be hearing but people jumping around, screaming about. I struggle seeing my best friends for like four days a week at uni. I couldn't imagine living with them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good time to move yeah. on to Lee and your, your article for this week. Um, so my article was um, from Closer as well and it's actually looking at bigamists. This is when someone marries someone when they're already married to someone else. And that's actually illegal in the UK and other countries, but for some it is not. Like Iran, South Africa and Saudi Arabia. In the UK, the current sentence is seven years imprisonment. Now of course we would never do such a thing, but this woman is friends with the other women. Will be will we be on a friendship terms if our partner was to see another person? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, quite simply. never. It's no. a, it's a not. Why would you not? Well, you just don't want like you don't want to think about the person that you're with being yeah. with somebody else, do you? Like it's not mm -hmm. like personally, it just makes me feel a bit sick. Yeah. Like yeah. No, don't get me wrong, I completely understand that. It's a very unique situation, but they they seem to find well, they, they certainly they're seem happy. to have something in common they're with it. Happy. Or, I yes. think, I well, think, I personally never ever. I think this woman must have like a lot in her to be able to forgive. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because like obviously, it takes to like. It takes a big person to be able to put something like that behind them. So she's obviously got a lot to be able to like move on, you know what I mean? I have a lot of respect for it because yeah. Like, yeah. Um, you know, like he was going on, said he was at work and he was actually with his other wife, you know what's hurtful? It's, it's more the betrayal, I think. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't get over something like that because I just think cheaters are yeah. dirt. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. She also seems to have a book on it as well. Yeah, well, yeah which is cash now. She's made a career, hasn't so she? Works out well. I hope she gets on the Amazon best um, seller list. I yeah. think I might read that next. <laughs> fair play to it. Right. That's an interesting story, yeah. though. I must say, it's definitely a unique one. That I don't think I've never heard anything like that before. It's the fact that they have, like, you have so many kids as well. These, like, what does uh -huh. his kids? I don't know yeah. what his kids think of this. Like. Do they know? How can you do like, this to do, my mom? Like, like, do they have a relationship with him? Do they or even know stuff? about yeah. it? Do they know that like well, their dad's got out, multiple so... other wives and like yeah, they'll find out soon. In the kids, if you were one like... of the kids and your parents had done this, how would you react? I, I don't would know. Like, I'd, I'd be yeah, really, I'd, really. I'd, but would you know any different? That's the thing. Like yeah. you've been brought up with it. Would you well, know that like that's not normal? Once you get a certain age, you probably realise something is up. You know what I mean? And for me, if that happened to me, I'd have to cut. If it was my dad. I wouldn't be able to yeah. have the definitely the same relationship that we have now mm -hmm. because yeah, obviously it's hurting a lot of people. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. it's a hard one. Like, do you can you easily forgive them? You know what I mean? It take a lot. Yeah, it, it, it would take a lot. lot. It would take a lot, and I think you know, like oh, yeah. like why just not. Just be single if you want to go play around. <laughs> it just makes you angry, don't, don't you? Don't get married to multiple women. <laughs> okay, well, that is it for hot pages of the papers today. Now let's see what everyone is talking about on social media. It's time for trending. the hot topic this week is coronavirus, is is the talk of the town. California Music Festival Coachella, which is normally in April, is in talks about moving the date to later in the year. So guys, firstly, let's discuss. Do you think this is an overreaction? I don't know. Mm. I honestly do not know anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I feel like this, the coronavirus, when we first heard it, oh, it's a virus, it's fine. And then now it's like, Oh, at least got on lockdown. Yeah. UK yeah. Uh, every at day first, you hear the news. The UK kind of just are rising every day. Up. I um, well, I appreciate that they've got to take precautions, but at the end of the like, I feel like they should maybe wait a couple more weeks or whatever to see where we get to. Happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because at this moment in time, it looks like 
it's obviously I think we've got to prepare ourselves for like a widespread outbreak. Mm -hmm. But it looks like right now we're man managing it okay. So obviously I feel like they should just hold back a couple of weeks before making mm. these big decisions. Well, they are taking the big precautions that we've seen in Italy, which is probably one of the bigger news that they've yeah. postponed all sporting mm -hmm. events to a later day because and they had they played a few matches behind closed also in empty stadiums. It's people obviously being very cautious about how it's going on at the minute and yeah what are your thoughts well for one I do, people go on holiday do they have to be cautious do they like mm -hmm. are they being like overthinking it i don't know i feel like um, people are obviously taking more of a precaution and more of a yeah. risk for this than say normal cold and flu because mm -hmm. obviously this is killing people but it's not just that it's the fact that I think it scares a lot of people the fact that we don't have a vaccine yeah. for it as yeah. yet so I feel like obviously with, with a vaccine for like a flu you can go and get your flu jab and, and you're more or less protected but mm -hmm. right now we don't have anything yeah. so we just I think people are sort of the probably buying into the media a little bit as well and yeah. a lot of the like I wouldn't a scaremongering, maybe not the right word, but it's obviously it's everywhere on the media at the moment, mm -hmm. so it's like it's getting forced upon you to, you know what I mean? Like, I work in Tesco, and like I came in the other day, and there was like no tin veg, there was no toilet, reel, toilet roll, there was no soap. Um, I got asked at that shift, I counted it how many times, about roughly 60 times I got asked, wow. is there any hand sanitizer? Oh. About 60 times I cut this in yeah. my head, and I was like, right, this is like, needs to calm down here. Like, yeah. we're, we're over panicking, we're but like, I seen it on from Facebook, and this old man had to buy tissue, like tissues for your nose, because there's no toilet paper well, left, my, and I broke my heart. My nana has been basically exactly the same. She yeah. rang me last week, and she said, "I've been to Boots, I've been to Home Bargains, I've been everywhere, and I can't get any hand sanitizer." Yeah. She's she's 81, and she's panicking. Like, and she got home, and she said, "I found some Dettol wipes, though, so it's all right." I, was like, I think it's harder for all the people because obviously their immune systems are short. Yeah. And you see in the UK alone, like it's people who are dying, sadly, mm -hmm. are a lot older, mm -hmm. and yeah. like. That's the sad thing about it, I think. And it's like, it's like today, for instance, um, I'm going to be going to Las Vegas in about three weeks' time, and my mum and dad are having a meeting with the travel agents today, um, and we, you've basically got to go off what they, you know what I mean, what they recommend. Like, obviously, the risk is, she says that we're fine to go. We get on that plane, get over there, and then when we're over there, there's a, there's an outbreak, and we can't get back for mm. like. That's the thing. My mm. parents were supposed to go on a cruise to yeah. India and Thailand, and that's been cancelled. Yeah. So. We want to say, like, what are your like plans? Are they going to be affected by coronavirus for stuff that's going to happen hope in the summer? Not. <laughs> uh, I personally hope not, because I'm actually going to New York with my mum, but we actually have postponed booking our flights because we actually mm -hmm. are scared in case happen. we... There's a lot of money, because like, the flights yeah, from... Like, I'm from Dublin, are like coming like a thousand euros mm -hmm. for two of us, and my mum's like, I don't want to put that kind of money down and not get it back. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's kind of sad that we, like, we're really, really looking forward to this. I got this for my 21st birthday. Yeah. And I'm um, like having to postpone it just for Billy Farris. Yeah. It's almost like how far do you have to sort of <laughs> Go. plan ahead, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of months. It will, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to stay on uh, coronavirus news. and It's been announced that the Queen Mary Centre in London is recruiting 24 volunteers to be infected by a strain of the coronavirus that isn't deadly uh, as part of a research, but the they will also be paid three and a half thousand pounds if you do volunteer yourself. I mean, it's what are your thoughts on doing a trial like that? Um, well, I don't know, we're drafting yeah. students, so you know, <laughs> so, you know I'll tell you really what, like, nice mainly we're off. Yeah. 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 I'm going to love See you in a few weeks. Over, you know? <laughs> I, mean, um, I personally, like, joking around, I wouldn't want to do it because I'm actually diabetic, so my immune system's a lot weaker compared yeah. to like a normal person my age. So I feel like if I got Coronavirus. See, I think I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm, 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 <laughs> Don't think I've yeah. got anything right now. Yeah. So you'd have to be quite brave to do it, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think if, it, if it's controlled, you know what I mean, and like oh, the, yeah, definitely. the people seem to know what they're doing, then I feel like that is that is a lot of money, and, and especially like people just said if they're looking like for students, then sometimes that money can can mm -hmm. maybe persuade help, somebody. Yeah. You know I mean? There's actually a mm -hmm. scientist uh, I read in Sky News this morning, and she was um, talking to. Um, on the breakfast show, and she was saying that actually there's just the survival rate is 99.9 at the minute. Like she said, it's very low proportion mm -hmm. where people are excessively banned, um, which I thought was pretty surprising because mm -hmm. obviously you see in the news it's just deaths and 
virus yeah. going I think on. it's important to stress that this isn't the coronavirus strain that is the deadly one. Oh, it's yeah. just a, it is another strain of it that they can use for research to find similar symptoms yeah. and then do more um, drug testing to yeah. be able to find a vaccine. So they are finding solutions to the problem. It's just happening very slowly. And also as well, if you, if you look at the deaths, obviously they're awful, but a lot of the deaths are people that have underlying health issues yeah. anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah, they've been so in if, hospital. If you, get the, if you get the virus and otherwise you're healthy, you, you, mm -hmm. you, you should really be okay. There's a very high can, chance. Yeah, look at mental can, health, for example. It. It's killing loads of young people. Um, more than like the coronavirus, you think about it, you, the Caroline Flack, etc. and stuff. But yeah, it's not okay. mm -hmm. Well, in America, the virus is also getting a lot of heat. A United Airline plane traveling from Colorado to New Jersey made a stop because a passenger sneezed and those sitting beside them became irate. So is this another thing about the overreaction on coronavirus that any sort of signs of fever at all? I think this one's a bit of an overreaction. So. Like, if you've got a cold, it's, what, what month are we in now? It's March. Like, I know, winter. It's, so. it's winter, But can you forgive really people winter. for being cautious? Oh, no, people are being cautious, but that is a little bit... Over dramatic. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I was on the train to the airport two weeks ago and there was a man, he was coughing everywhere and I was like, okay, like I need to step back a yeah. bit and kind of freaking out. Like I mean on the on the inside it, it, I can get why it would make you nervous. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if it was like if he was sneezing constantly for like half an hour or mm -hmm. however long. If it, it was, became like then, worrying. Yeah, then maybe. Then, yeah, but if it's but, just a couple of sneezes then yeah. It's probably a cold. Like. Yeah. We're all making jokes out of it, like, you know, your friends in the car, oh, coronavirus, like, you know, like, <laughs> but, like, maybe this is a bit of an overreaction, you know. I think it's because, like, it is so highly publicised, and yeah. I think that's probably why people are being more cautious and probably are overreacting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have any of you guys changed, like, your routines about what you do day to day? Are you more conscious of your hygiene, washing your hands more, hand sanitizing? Are you more conscious of that now? I think so. Um, I'm probably washing my hands a lot more yeah. than what I actually. Obviously, when I go to school, I wash my hands. But like, <laughs> I, I'll, like there were times I sit in the living room and I always walk in and wash my hands. And I'm yeah. actually sitting happy birthday when I'm washing my hands. And I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I did that the other day. Yeah, and like, I went, sing happy birthday when you wash your hands. Yeah. She sent me into the kitchen to wash my hands. I went, but who am I singing happy birthday yeah, to? Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, like, personal entertainment. Yeah, I'll I think sing it to myself. Like, un unconsciously, I'm sort of like using hand sanitizer an awful lot more. Like, I wake up and I'll be like, right, I need to put some hand sanitizer on. And then when I'm going out, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it is getting a bit silly, but like, it's just what we've got to do to keep mm. healthy. I, I, can't, I can't think it's the best first impression if you shake someone's hand and then immediately grab for hand sanitizer yeah. so, no, and then just yeah. go for this. <laughs> Even when I'm actually on buses at the minute, I'm not touching the rails because I'm like, I'm kind of scared. Cause oh, actually, really? Yeah, because I haven't got any hand sanitizer, I can't get it anywhere. Because you can't get yeah. it. So yeah. I'm like, can I walk in? I'm like, I'm going to fall on this bus. I'm going to like <laughs> make a show of myself. So like, <laughs> Well, I do see when people do have hand sanitizer, people are gathering around. Yeah. You know, it's like, the, it's it's like, like when you get the chewing gum out in school. Yeah, it's like you remember like your kids at school and people had like a bag of sweets or like, they were like new phones yeah, back yeah, then, yeah. everyone just gathered around just being like, so fascinated by it. Yeah. I think they'd never seen hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer before. Well, right now, they probably well, have. The, <laughs> company, <laughs> the companies are making absolute fortune out of it. Oh, yeah, so definitely. We've seen it for like 80 odd quid on Amazon yeah. right now. It's Which is outrageous. It is ridiculous. Outrageous. Mm -hmm. OK, well, we are going to move away from the coronavirus. And a controversial video has circulated the timeline this week. So let's have a look at it. So this video shows American rapper to baby slap a woman. The woman in the crowd puts her flashlight very close to his face in an attempt to possibly get a video of him. However, she probably did not expect to get uh, what happened afterwards, the reaction that he got. So what are your thoughts on this? I think it's... It's too far. Yeah. yeah. Too far. He's a pop... Like, OK, it is invasive putting the flashlight in your in his face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't like that personally. But you won't I mean, slap him. Like, no, no. Hit the person. Like, you're... Like, these people make you famous, they buy um, your music, they yeah. make you... They, they've paid, yeah. they've paid a lot, they've, they, that, woman, that woman's probably paid a lot of money to go and yeah. mm -hmm. watch him live, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Obviously it's not ideal to have like a, a light flashing in your face, but it, you think it sort of comes with the part and parcel of not, I'm not saying it's acceptable, but if you're famous and you're on stage, people are going to be taking like pictures yeah. Yeah. and stuff, you know what I mean? And, and you can't just turn around and hit someone because you don't yeah. like it. Maybe, do what you she did was, maybe what she did was a bit... 
wrong, but even then, that doesn't yeah. that doesn't warrant that but he's going to turn But does this all bring though? over that argument of like paparazzi and sort of being constantly following people around and maybe invading their privacy a bit more? It would be it would be for shit, you know what I mean? It like, would be. I, I can see I why it's for annoying. celebrities. You know, they probably can't even yeah. go to Starbucks and like mm -hmm. there's paparazzi all around them and yeah. all. So maybe like he's thinking, I'm in a club, you know, I'm hanging out with my, yeah, my friends, or whatever, yeah. and like. She obviously like annoyed him, but like yeah, you can't condone the reaction. No, no you can't like not. hitting mm -hmm. someone, like especially that that poor woman. I actually want to know if she's actually okay because yeah. he looked like yeah. he hit her with full yeah. force. He, he did end up apologising after this incident, but it's still it can't be condoned at all, can no. it? No, no. Yeah. That's so we're gonna move on now, and it's time for some cheeky scenarios. It's question time. <laughs> So the first question in question time is about Snapchat. This question also applies for Instagram and Facebook stories if you use them. Panel, is it rude to put up a story on your Snapchat if you have not replied to people that have privately snap messaged you? Um, <laughs> that works me. That annoys me. Does it? it? Really? Is this one of your pet peeves? Um, yeah, and I think it's really rude. Like, actually, for example, the other day my friend um, back home was telling me she's talking to this guy. And they went on a date and blah blah. It was like mm -hmm. really going well. And he hasn't spoke to her, but he's been putting up Instagram stories and Snapchat stories. And she's like, mm -hmm. "Why can't you just tell me? Like, I'm not into you anymore. Like, why is he put up stories?" And it's really getting to her. It is annoying when it's yeah. in that kind of situation. However, I can't really um, say that I haven't done it before. Yeah, it but it depends who you're talking to. Like, if it's like someone that, oh, <laughs> I'm I'm definitely guilty of, of, of this on occasion. I feel like sometimes when you take. Snapchats and you take Instagrams, you're doing it for an event and f mm -hmm. for a reason, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you might be in, like, a really nice restaurant and you want to take a picture of your food before you eat it. So then then you can always, like, message, like... I don't know, I don't do it on purpose as such. No, you might just do it really yeah, quickly yeah. and not realise yeah. Because that... you can always... You can reply to anyone at any time, you know what exactly. I mean? Whereas the opportunity for, like, the <laughs> perfect picture might not come around if you wait. Yeah. I don't know, like, it, it does irk me, like, I think, I think it's just rude. Well, yeah. I think it depends what the conversation, like, is, to be honest. I've been talking to someone, like, romantically, if and, like, they're yeah, not a pan back to you, I'm like, right, okay, like, over, that's just dumb, I can't even reply back yeah. to the message. That's a bit rude. Yeah. Yeah. If you're talking to a friend, Definitely like, trying rude, to have a conversation, and they're doing something yeah. else. But then I probably, my friends probably think I'm quite rude, because since I've moved here, my replies to people are so bad. Like, for the other day, there was a girl who messaged me on the 14th of February, I only replied back to her like last night. I didn't even see her oh, message. That is so pretty poor. That's me, I'm, excessive. That I'm one is rude. That one is definitely rude. Yeah, I, well, I apologise. <laughs> yeah, it was just much easier in the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> so, next one, would you go on holiday with someone that you've actually only dated for three months? I've done this. So have I. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did this. Obviously, it didn't Tell your end story. well in the end. Well, oh. my. Where did you go? We went to Corfu. Okay. And we had only been together for about three months. We're not together anymore. What? But <laughs> not because of that whole thing. Holy disaster. If anyone's considering, there we go. That's what happened. Yeah. What happened? Was that, was that the, what happened? That wasn't the reason we fell out. We fell out all ages after that. But it was oh, a, right. like, yeah. No, it was fine. Was it was great. Well, but what made you think, day. like, yes, we're going to go and do this? Um, I don't know. I think it was just the time of year that it was. I think love blind you. Um, you're like, yeah. oh, this, like, this is not normal. It was cheap. I think it only cost about 350 quid for a week all inclusive in coffee. And I thought, you know what? When, when was Let's this? Go, um, phew, last, not October, just gone October before. October 2018. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be, so you've been, what, 18, I 19? I had just turned 19. What did your parents say? I know. They weren't bothered. See, oh, I had yeah. mine in secrecy because I actually hadn't came out to my parents. So I was dating my ex-boyfriend at the time and we went on a holiday. And I told my parents that I was going to meet my friends and we're here in Newcastle Uni. Oh. And um, I just thought, oh, it's really exciting, you know, like, like they don't know. Like, and I'm like over here on holiday with this um, uh, this guy in Newcastle. And um, yeah, um, I think I think that's what I'm saying. Like love blinds you, and like oh, that's yeah. why I was like, oh my god, I would, yeah, I would never do that. Yeah. I just wouldn't. I well, after we went on a two-week holiday. It's, it's, <laughs> it's also important to remember, though, like 
everyone moves different at different paces in relationships, mm-hmm. you know what? Yeah. So, I, I, like, if it feels right to you, then why not? You know what I mean? It's your, mm-hmm. it's your relationship. It's, it's your time. Obviously, everyone moves different. So, so yeah. everyone should be allowed to do what they want I to do. I think yeah. I fall head over heels with people. And I'm like, yeah. I put all my eggs in one basket and I'm like, <laughs> hurt. Too early on. Then yeah, yeah not for me, Greece. that. <laughs> right, so we previously spoke a little bit about house sharing and hot pages, but Paddle, what is the best way to tell your flatmates they need to do the washing? <sighs> Holly. It just doesn't work. <laughs> like, there's been times, so many times, when I've had to deal with the people's washing up because it's been weeks and weeks and weeks. Oh. Got to the point now where we just couldn't sometimes put the washing on top but of the fridge. And are, they you, still are, don't you like a, are you like a clean freak or is it just something that um, you just can't It's clean? just annoying when you go into bad? your kitchen and there's stuff everywhere. I'm like, a clean freak. I've cleaned that kitchen at least three times in one day before just because of. See, how, do, how do they mess it up in? I don't in know. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> it's dishes. I can't stand when dishes don't get put away. After. Like back home, we wash the dishes, put them away right away. Like people in my flat leave their dishes there for like a week. Yes. And like, yes. and it's bin bags as well. Like bin bag. I'm like seriously. And I phoned my mum the other day. I was like, I'm getting so annoyed with this bin bag. And she goes, just tie it up and put it outside the door. And yeah. So I did that the other day. I like, could you go on and on. It's a classic uni hall thing. I was going to say it's, it's probably a lot easier for me to say this because I'm not absolutely like living at uni at the minute. But surely, if something's like getting on your nerves that much, you just got to stamp your authority down and be like. This is yeah. it. We need to have a conversation. Mm. You're not pulling your weight. Let's get this sorted. Mm. Hard love is the best type of love to receive. Mm. Mm. Right, so next one. Uh, is getting a tattoo of your artist's favourite lyrics too far? So here is an example of someone getting the lyrics of H's verse. I mean, uh, where do we start with this one? <laughs> Lee, uh, <laughs> Lee, your immediate reaction. Um, I wouldn't, personally. No. I think it, it's, I, it's, I'm it's quite a choice topic. lyrics, isn't it? What if you decide in a few years that you don't like that song anymore? <laughs> and you're stuck with well those I, words. I don't like I songs enough. I think went on like, a club with Tinder for a holiday, got drunk and got it tattooed. It was an accident, wasn't it? This wasn't, it can't be serious. The, the biggest thing for tattoos in general, but especially things like this, is unless you are ready to go through the pain and pay the money for laser, Removal. That's going to be on the body for yeah. the rest yeah, of your life. Definitely. So you know what I mean. And uh, okay. I feel like this is a drunken like decision. Like for the, well, the thing oh, is, let's do a tattoo. Well, the thing is, I said I would never get a tattoo at all unless it was something that was like really deeply mm-hmm. meaningful to me. I just don't. See, I just don't. Yeah. Get song, I can see how song lyrics fall into that, but I just don't. I can't I think, think of any that really. Some songs have that a one. meaning. Yeah. Them, but I mean, yeah. grab it and I mean that it. one in particular. <laughs> There's only one meaning to that. that if you can read, if you can read it, I'm not sure it is. It's certainly nothing that I'd go for. I love the way she's got not. H. The artists on just so everybody below, knows, so she, they really know, like, oh, it's just it. yeah. yeah. What about what about you guys? Because my my mum told me she would disown me if, if oh, I got a tattoo. Oh, I go to uh, yeah. Ibiza. My mum said, "Mate, please don't come back with any tattoos." My mum, please, just don't my make mom and dad decisions. said the same thing. Accidentally came back from Magaluf with oh. a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go to the one and said, "Sorry, mum, the tattoo no, part." No, it's not that bad actually. <laughs> And then I got another one, like, a year and a bit later. I had to hide that from my dad what for was a few tattoo? months. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> the one on Michael. Um, it's just a little love heart. It's not, it could be worse. For a Michael love tattoo, it could be a lot worse. But the second one I had to hide from my dad for months and months what and months. What was it? It's a forget-me-not down my arm here for my granddad. See, I, like, I would get something like that. Yeah, like, that I wanted to get one for my granny, and it was like, so you know, I can't exactly remember what it said, but it was something meaningful, and, like, right around the first three. But then I was, like, kind of put off the thought, because I'm like, if I... When I'm older, I don't know if I like this or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, till till I was like 18, I got the whole routine of like, you will like sort of be disowned and stuff if you get a tattoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but now I feel like the, the points come where my mum and dad are quite, they're quite like able for me to get my tattoo whenever I want. So yeah, I'm mm-hmm. just waiting really. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right, last one. Would you be able as a parent to have the talk with your children? Well, <laughs> I'm actually making a podcast all about this at the moment. Oh, really? I am. And I had to ring my mum last week and ask her why we never had this conversation. She says she tried and I just told her to go away, basically. <laughs> but um, I, can, I can see why parents don't want to do it. I wouldn't want to do it. Like, you don't want to talk to your kids It's about, awkward, isn't it? You don't want it's to talk to your kids. It's an but I feel like it's a competition that needs to be had like, yeah. at all. Because, oh, yeah. like, but how do, how do you even open into that conversation? Exactly. You know I mean? like, you how do you go into it? You can't go to your, dad, your mum and you dad You don't back. do it while you're eating your roast dinner on a Sunday, do you? Like, <laughs> well, I think people, they, they're either very closed off and don't really want to say mm-hmm. anything or they're 
like very very open about. So I think it kind of depends on your stance, yeah. really. Do you know I actually didn't have, have the talk of my mum and dad? Like I was just like your like, gear was just too mm. awkward. Yeah, and they brought it up. I was like, I want to talk about this. I know about it. Yeah, That's all I need already to know. done it. I know everything I need to know. <laughs> Pack it in, let's not. <laughs> yeah. All right then. Well, unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. Thank you guys for watching and thank you so much to the panel. We'll see you next week for another episode of Real Talk and some more hot tea. Bye bye. Bye. bye.